As the ball dropped on New Year's Eve last year, we had a vision for what 2020 would bring. In a matter of months, that crystal clear 2020 vision had become blurry. As our goals and hopes for the year had to be changed, people started to ask, when will we go back to normal? After all, going back to normal would solve all of our problems, right? But what if normal was broken? Let's start this year by looking at things in our life that we hope don't go back to normal. From faith to finances, from relationships to racial divide. Let's move forward instead of going back to the broken normal. Hey there, my name is Josh. I wanna thank you for joining me for another study session. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch these sessions. I hope you're having some good conversations as a result of them. And uh, I know I've had a lot of fun putting them together for you. Today we're going to begin a new series. We're calling it Renew Normal. And it's kind of based on this idea of the fact that early on in the pandemic ravaged year of 2020, a lot of people were saying, I just can't wait to get back to normal. And I'm sure that it was something that you heard, perhaps it was even something that you said. I know for me, it was something that I heard and, and would often say as well that we could all just at some point get back to the way that things were. And I think for us, it was a way to just kind of manage what we were experiencing. It was a way for us to have kind of a, a light at the end of the tunnel. And especially as the pandemic wore on uh, month after month, it just seemed like it was something that we could kind of hold on to. But the question is, normal is something that we actually want to get back to, or if this is an, an opportunity for us to kind of reset and uh, enter into a bit of a, a renewal. So as we continue our way forward, and it really does feel like we're moving forward out of the dumpster fire that was 2020, I thought perhaps we could look back on some specific aspects of life and, and maybe look at them in a new way in hopes that maybe they don't go back to normal or at least to the way that it was before. And so from the practice of our faith to the management of our finances, from relationships to racial divide, I actually don't want to go back to normal because in a lot of ways, I think normal was broken. Raise your hand if in the midst of this pandemic, you committed to taking up a new hobby or learning a foreign language. Or maybe you said to yourself, I'm going to buy myself a treadmill and commit to running on it every day. Yeah, that's me. That was, that was my uh, pandemic purchase. I said to myself, if I'm going to be stuck in this house, then I'm going to run on this treadmill. Well, I can tell you that there already is quite a bit of dust that is collecting <laughs> on this treadmill. We all have good intentions, don't we? We all uh, have good intentions when it comes to devotion, when it comes to dedicating ourselves to something. The idea of it is always uh, so invigorating and enthralling, but the follow through part of it is the real challenge. And either we begin the process and kind of falter, or maybe we never even get on the treadmill. Um, whatever it might be, I think we have the best of intentions, but sometimes, or maybe many times, we fall short of what our expectations are as far as what devotion is. So I often think that a great way to move forward is actually to look back. And especially as we are moving forward out of this pandemic and into whatever this renewed normal is going to be, maybe now is a time when we can actually kind of look at the basics, go back to the very beginning and pull some uh, wisdom from 
uh, scripture to kind of help guide us as we move forward. You know, a lot of times when we're struggling, when things are really difficult, we can inadvertently kind of make things um, too complex. We, we add things on top as, as opposed to removing things. And so I'd like to spend our time today kind of removing some of those aspects and, and look at uh, a verse that you probably know well. It's from Acts 2. And it's when the first followers of Christ and his church are, are first forming together and, and the things that they're doing as a body of believers, a new body of believers, what are the things that they are committing to? What are the things that they are devoting themselves to? So if you would turn with me to Acts 2 verse 42, and I'm going to read it kind of in, in bits and pieces and just kind of talk through uh, some of those aspects. And so I have it here for us. Acts 2 and the first part of Verse 42, it says, all the believers devoted themselves to. And it's interesting because the word devoted here is actually the Greek word proskartario. Sorry, I'll put it up on screen because I butchered that pretty well. But it's, it's devoted. It's what you think it would be. And, and the definition is to attend to constantly, to persist, persevere in, continue steadfast in or wait upon, so devoted. Um, and what, what were they devoted to? Well, they were devoted to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And so when they devoted themselves to these things, what were the results? What, were, what was the fruit that they uh, experienced as a result of devoting themselves to these very basic disciplines? And we read in Acts 2, 43 through 47, that a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, and met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Perhaps it's an this is an opportunity for us to look back at what was done in the early church and, and kind of emulate some of those very basic things that they were devoted to. So devotion is much more than just a decision. You and I can make decisions all day, but we actually have to follow through on those decisions. Devotion is a discipline and a desire to follow through even in the face of difficulty, or maybe perhaps because of difficulty, we want to follow through on these things. So I wanted to give three things that I think that we can kind of re renew a new devotion that we can have to very three very basic things when it comes to our spiritual formation and the activities that we are part of, uh, the relationships that we are part of. And this list by no means is exhaustive. It's no by no means comprehensive. It's three things that I've thought about. I'm sure that there are many more things that you could add to your list. Maybe there are things specifically that you've thought about that you would like to devote yourself to. And so I would just encourage you to consider what those things are and how you might be able to follow through on devoting yourself to those practices. So the very first one seems like a no-brainer, but I think that we should devote ourselves to reading scripture. And, and really reading it and, and committing to reading it on a regular basis. I'm going to give you some really interesting statistics here. Prior to uh, 2020, it's estimated that 60%, 68% of Christians weren't reading their Bible regularly. And 12% said that they read it rarely, if ever. And so I'm not here to shame you or to say that you need to read the Bible, you need to uh, 
um, check that box off your list. What I'm saying is that it is something that a lot of Christians are struggling to do on a regular basis. And I'll be fully honest with you and transparent that I'm currently reading through the Bible beginning to end, and I'm already behind in my reading plan. <laughs> so it happens to all of us, right? Life gets in the way. We have a lot of things that are coming at us on a regular basis. And so we, for devotion to really take hold, we need to find ways that we can push through even in the difficulty of a busy schedule or you know other distractions that come along. And so I wonder if navigating COVID-19 and its many challenges over these many months would have gone better had we been devoted to much more time studying scriptures, studying the scriptures as opposed to scrolling through our social media. And again, I'm, I'm not disparaging social media. There are lots of benefits that come with that. But I wonder if a lot of us, that was our go-to, the social media feeds, as opposed to the scripture that is so life-giving and is um, so applicable to everyday life. In Hebrews 4.12, we read this, For the word of God is alive and powerful, it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And isn't that what we need so often? Is something that really cuts to the core of what we're dealing with, of what we're struggling with. It opens up our hearts and our minds to something that is bigger than us, it, it helps us tap into our kind of deepest selves. And that is so often where God resides and where he is speaking to us in that soft whisper that we know that he uh, provides. Here's a, another telling statistic that we should consider that in 2019, 65% of Americans considered themselves to be Christians. 62% said they considered themselves to be spirit, deeply spiritual. And yet only 16% of these same people reported that they make choices based on God's word. In 2 Timothy, we read this. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Again, the Bible is not a textbook. It's not an instruction manual, but it is so much more. It is speaking to us. It is a love letter from God himself to us where we can learn from past generations and understand how it affects us now, today, very much in the here and now. The Bible is very much textbook on instructing us about the fulfillment we discover when following God's lead in our lives. And scripture helps us recognize how he leads in our lives and what it is that we need to do to allow for that to happen. And that is why we should be devoted to reading scripture day and night, meditating on it day and night as we're asked to do in scripture. So two, the second thing that I think we should devote ourselves to is connection. And I know that this is a word that's kind of thrown around and, and it's easily um, misunderstood. But prior to the pandemic, it's estimated that 63% of church goer, goers attended worship once or twice a month at most and 30 percent attended seldom or never in the vast majority of churches no more than 35 percent of people are part of a small group and since covid began 48 percent of church goers nationwide have completely disconnected 
from church engagement. Here's another one that's really telling as well. In 2019, 100% of practicing Christians had gone to church within the past six months. Six months into the pandemic of 2020, 19% had not gone to church at all, online or in person. And to me, that shows a real disconnect from church. And I would say too, what it shows is that if there isn't a reason to go to church, then a lot of people find every reason not to. And I'm not saying that it is mandatory for you to attend church. It's not the act of attending church. It's really more about the devotion of wanting to find connection. And so often connection can be found most easily on Sunday mornings. But as we know too, being a part of a spiritual formation group during the course of a week is another opportunity for you to be connected. So is volunteering, whether that be at the heart or whether that be in the community. There are many, many different connection points that we can be a part of. It's just a matter of whether we want to devote ourselves to that. And there is a sacrifice that comes with that devotion. And there is difficulty that comes in the midst of that. There, again, are things that vie for our attention outside of those things that we need to be aware of. And so we really need to commit ourselves to that time with one another, whether that be on Sunday mornings, whether that be volunteering, whether that be in, as part of a spiritual formation group. These, like I said, are sobering statistics that really reveal a lot about ourselves and maybe where we're at right now as well. We desire connection and community because like the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are created for community. You and I are created for connection. We are not meant to be isolated or to be alone. Statistics reveal a movement away from connection. And I would actually argue that although we have more connection points than ever before, we probably feel further apart from one another than we ever have. In fact, there is a pandemic of another kind that is going on, and it's loneliness. I think that that is a severe aspect of what is happening in our culture. Although we are connected, like I said, in ways like never before, I believe that those connection points are very shallow and are very much based on circumstances. And to have real, deep, meaningful connection, it takes devotion. It takes the desire and the follow through to make those things happen. But to do so, we must take the first step of making a decision. We must attend to connection constantly. We must persist after it. We must pers persevere in attending to it. We must continue steadfast in and wait upon it, even in the difficulty that we might come across. And we must follow through in our desire to to discover real and meaningful connection. So here's the third thing that I think that we need to devote ourselves to. And again, it's a real basic one. I think we should be devoted to prayer. And I'd like to ask these questions just simply to get your thoughts going, not again as any kind of accusation, not as any kind of uh, determination as to where you're at with prayer, but just Think about these questions when it comes to your prayer life. If all of your prayers came true, how holy or righteous would you be? How transformed would you be? How many other people would be helped besides yourself? And how would the world change because of your prayers? Individually speaking, I think that prayer is one of those things that can easily be done just as easily as it can be completely forgotten. 
or missed. In other words, we can pray just about anywhere, at any time, in any way. And if we're intentional about it, a vibrant prayer life is one way that we see God working in the world around us. Think about it. Prayer, when it is answered, is one of the most visible ways that we see an invisible God at work in the world around us. And even when prayer isn't answered, just the act of it and the obedience of it, we start to recognize God's plan. We can still see it honestly around us because our hearts and our minds are open to something that is bigger than just us. And that's a really special thing. So again, attend to prayer constantly. Persist, persevere in, continue steadfast in and wait upon it. We can look at Jesus and how consistent and how devoted he was to prayer. So there it is. There are three things that I think that we can work on devoting ourselves to as we experience a renewed normal. I think that we can devote ourselves to scripture, to reading our Bibles consistently. I think that we can devote ourselves to connection, real deep, meaningful connection. And I think that we can devote ourselves to prayer. Perhaps you have a list of your own, like I said, and what is on that list and how might you devote yourself to those things? Whatever it is, make a decision to commit yourself to doing these things, especially when times are difficult. Don't allow it to become the treadmill of your life where you have all the best of intentions and then sure enough, dust starts to settle on that, uh, that treadmill that isn't being used as regularly as it could or should be. So let's not slide back into the broken normal that was. Instead, let's be changed by God in the midst of this difficult season, believing that we will be better because of what is being revealed in us by him. Let us be changed because God wants change in our life. So thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Like I said, if you're interested and want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can do so by clicking the subscribe button below. That way you can be notified when new videos and new study sessions are posted and until we meet again i wish you all the best god bless